we be able to get through the whole thing. Like I said, we are going to have some special guests that's going to be calling in Lord's Will today. Uh, but before we do that, man, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So give me that first map real quick. It was a map, I believe, that I posted first. Let's go! Put it up real quick. The maps of uh, Paul's journeys. All right, so this is uh, the Apostle Paul's journey. Now, these are what they were called in ancient times. Like many of these areas are not called the same today, right? So <clears throat> right there where you see where Asia is. Zoom in on that for me. Yep, right there. So you see it's called Asia, right? But today it's called Turkey, okay? Turkey. And in Turkey, you have seven churches. Let's, let's count them off real quick. Pergamum. Mm -hmm. One. Smyrna. Two. Ephesus. Three. Thyatira. Seven. Sardis. Excuse me. Four. <laughs> Go ahead. Sardis. Five. Philadelphia. Six. Laodicea. Right, and seven. These are the seven churches that Christ uh, spoke to in the book of Revelation, chapter hey. one, two, and three. Okay, though uh, John, the revelator, was supposed to be sending letters to them. Now, uh, also, F Smyrna is where we were at. Now, Smyrna today is called Izmir. Now, y'all, as you know, uh, Bishop Nathaniel Deacon, Isaac Deacon Malachi, Captain Ashenel, myself, and many of the other brothers, we were able to go to Smyrna, all right? Uh, today is called Izmir, I-Z-M-I-R, okay? I-Z-M-I-R, that's what it's called today, all right? But in ancient times, it was called Smyrna. That was one of the seven churches, all right? So with that being said, go to the next one right quick. So that's called Asia Minor, what you're looking at right there, Asia Minor, which is now Turkey, okay? Message. Now, Turkey is what it's called today. T Turkey was named after a man called Mustafa Atatatürk, all right? When they pushed the Greeks out, in 1912, I believe it was, he was their founder. So Turkey is named after his last name, Ataturk. Hey. All right, so these are where the church So Now, you saw it says Smyrna in the ancient map, but you see right here, it's called Izmir. Okay, so you have Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Izmir, Ephesus, Philadelphia, uh, Laodicea. Okay, so these are the churches. And then over there, you see the Asian Sea. We're going to deal into that a little bit later. Go to 2 Corinthians 11 real quick, verse 22. Let's go! So our forefathers did many mighty works, all right? And they went all over Europe, um, Asia Minor, which is the modern-day Turkey, Greece, places like that, Rome, Crete, which is an island west of Israel in the Mediterranean. So I believe it's the Mediterranean Sea is where it is. Um, so you got these different places where our forefathers went back and forth, Syria, Syria, Damascus, things of that nature. Read that for me, 2 Corinthians 11, verse uh, 22. The book of First Corinth, Second Corinthians, eleven and verse twenty-two. Yeah. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Read. Are they Israelites? So am I. Speaking about the men, the leaders of the church in Corinth. Go ahead. Are they the seed of Abraham? Mm -hmm. So am I. Go ahead. Are they ministers of Christ? So wait a minute. Who were the who 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 were the Corinthians? I just caught that. Damn. Are they ministers of Christ? Go back. Who were the Corinthians? Are they Hebrews? So am I. Read. Are they Israelites? So am I. He said, the Hebrew, he said the Corinthians was Israelites. That's the first time I caught that. Damn. So they <laughs> cut. Do it. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So the Corinthians are the seed of Abraham and they're Israelites. Hey. And they're Hebrew. Go ahead. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. Read. I am more. In labors, more abundant. Read. In stripes, above measure. Read. In prisons, more frequent. Read. In deaths, oft. Read. Of the Jews, five times received I, forty stripes, save one. So Paul went through it everywhere he went. Go ahead. Thrice I was beaten with rods. He was beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. He was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Shipwreck, why? Because he was constantly traveling. Like, for instance, your flight get delayed, Right. Or you you blow a tire on your car. That done happened many times. We've been on our way, on our way to a blitz or something, and the, blow, the tire blow out, or we have a car issue. We got to stop and get maintenance on the car. Or either, um, you know, your flight get delayed, you get pushed a day back or uh, a couple hours back later than you were supposed to be there. Those things happen when you actually travel and do the work. Hey. You understand? That's why we don't check in with nobody. I'm sorry, I can't. I just, I'm sorry. Go ahead. A night and a day have I been in the deep. Go ahead. In journeyings often. So Paul was in journeyings often. Paul went from church to church, city to city, country to country, teaching the gospel. Man. And that's what Israel United in Christ is doing today. You see it. It's evident. The brothers is going all over the world. Passover yes, is going all over the world. Sir. Brothers going individually all over the world, teach the gospel. Many men are going out here following in the footsteps of our forefathers. Now, that was, that was Paul's mission. Christ gave Paul that mission, right? Go to Acts 9.15 real quick. Just that one scripture. I think it's just that one scripture. Let's go! 
Acts 9, 15. The book of Acts, chapter 9 and verse 15. Go ahead. Bring it out. But the Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. So Paul was a chosen vessel. Guess what? The brothers that you see out here traveling, doing the work, they were chosen to do that. The Lord put them in a financial position. The Lord put them in a job position. You didn't start your career in IT or something 20 years ago just for you to make a good living. No, God did that. The Most High did that. Christ did that so that you can now do what? Go out and travel and do the work. Hey. The Lord preparing us for these things. You understand? That's what you got. You got to understand. Everybody is in the position that the Lord wants them to be in at this particular time. Man. It's the Lord that called us to do it, just like he chose the Apostle Paul to do it. All right? So if you have the means to do it, you need to do it. Hey. Read it again. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Read. To bear my name before the Gentiles. To bear my name before the Gentiles. And kings and the children of Israel. And, and kings and the children of Israel. Go ahead. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So the Apostle Paul will have to suffer great things for the Lord's sake. That's that shipwreck. That's that beating with rods. That's that stone. You understand? That's in and out of prison. Fasting often. Without food often. You understand what I'm saying? Paul had to go through that. Guess what? We're going to have to go through the same thing. That's Prepare right. your hearts. That's why every trip ain't smooth. It's always something. Every trip we go hey. on, it's always some stuff that happens. Why? Because we are, have to follow in the footsteps of our forefathers. The acts of the apostles continues. All right? Now, Paul didn't just wake, wake up one day or him and the other apostles didn't just wake up one day and start traveling and start enduring and going through these things. It takes a revolutionary mindset to do it. Let's read that first book, Christ uh, and Caesar and Christ. Let's read about Jesus Christ real quick. Let's go. Let's see what Caesar, the story of civilization, Caesar and Christ by Will Durant. Now, once you go inside, it's a green highlighted part. Let's let's read something about the black Messiah right quick, because y'all got it confused. All right. Read that for me. The revolution he sought was a far deeper one without which reforms could only be superficial and transitory. If he could cleanse the human heart of selfish desire, cruelty and lust, utopia would come of itself. And all those institutions that rise out of human greed and violence and the consequent need for law would disappear. Since this would be the profoundness of all revolutions, beside which all others would be mere coup d'etats of class, ousting class, and exploiting, exploiting in its turn, Christ was in this spiritual sense the greatest revolutionist in history. So Christ, the black messiah, what a bomb's that? Christ, the black messiah, was the greatest revolutionist in history. That thing heavy right there. Christ was a revolutionary. This is why the apostles followed in his steps, went to other nations, and prophesied against them. They didn't try to overthrow them physically. That's something called the Sakari. They were doing that. They were rising up trying to overthrow the government. That don't work. Go, ask, go to Acts chapter 4 real quick. Let's go. To show you that don't work. I mean, it, just real fast. Acts chapter 4, and I want you to read. Is it 4? No, chapter 5. Excuse me. Acts chapter 5 uh, and verse 36. The book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. But I have, I have a greater witness than no, that. Acts chapter 5, verse 36. Oh, excuse me. The book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. Go ahead. Yes, sir. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who were slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. Right, this brother Theodos was trying to overthrow Rome, and he hey. was not able to. And all the men that he had with him, they had scattered abroad, because you're not going to overthrow this kingdom with weapons. Remember, the, go to Job 14, verse 4 and 5 right quick. Let's the go. Lord set the so-called white man up to be ruling at this particular time. Just like he set Babylon up, Persian media up, Greece up, the Egyptians up. The Lord allowed these nations to rule for a certain time. And then after they rule for that certain time, their kingdom will be destroyed. Hey. There ain't nothing you can rush. You can't rush through it. Christ was a revolutionary because he wanted to change the minds and the hearts of the people first and foremost. Watch this. Read. The book of Job, chapter 14, and verse 4. Come on. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Read. Not one. Read. The Bible says you can't bring nothing clean out of an unclean thing. Go ahead. 
Seeing his days are determined. See why? Because his days are determined. His days have already been set out by the Lord. You can't go and say, okay, America going to end today. No, you can't do that. You can't say, oh, wrong going to end today. You can't do that. Babylon going to end right now. You can't do that. That's not up to you. It's up to God. Hey. The Lord is the one that set the bounds of the people. How long they can rule. Keep reading. Keep reading. Seeing his days are determined. Read. The number of his months are with thee. Come on. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. He said thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. He can't go past that certain time that the Lord is going to allow them to rule. The Lord rules in the kingdom of men. What made Christ a great revolutionary is he was there to set the people free mentally and spiritually first and foremost. Hey. You understand? He was not there to deliver them at that particular time. That's why when the Christians say they saved, they don't understand the Bible. They've never read it. Truly. Now, there's another book I had called, uh, before we get there, go to uh, Matthew 4, 17 real quick. Let's see what Christ taught when he was on earth. Because somebody might say, well, if Christ was a revolutionary, why did he redeem the people at that time? We just read the scripture to you. Can't nobody haste past the time that the Lord has already set. Not even Christ. He has to fall in line with what the Lord has put in place first and foremost. Read that for me. The book of Matthew 4, verse 17. Go ahead. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So in other words, my kingdom coming. It's coming. But repent first. That was his <laughs> message. Repent. Prepare your hearts. You're going to go through some persecution. You're going to go through some trial and tribulation. Prepare yourself. Luke 9, 56. Christ was the greatest revolutionary in history. He wanted hey. to change the minds and the hearts of the people first to set them free. Spiritually. Read that for me. The book of Luke 9, verse 56. Go ahead. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives. Read. But to save them. What did he do? But to save them. So he didn't come to destroy the lives of men, meaning the Israelite man and woman. But to save them. Save them who? By preparing them to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hey. That was Christ's message. I don't understand what Christians are reading. Right? If you ain't reading, if you're not, if you don't go to Matthew 5, 17. We were just talking about this a second ago. If you ain't reading the Bible the way it was written, as it, was, as it is written, because y'all be looking for loopholes in the scriptures to fulfill your uh, lusts. But the Bible says it's very clear. Matthew 5, verse 17. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Why? Because Christ was in the law and in the prophets. Go ahead. Hey. I am not come to destroy, Read. but to fulfill. Fulfill what in the law and the prophets? What they wrote about him. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you, Read. till heaven and earth pass, mm -hmm. one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law when? till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. That was Christ's message. I don't understand these people. Y'all got to read. Come on. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. And whoever break a least commandment. And shall teach men so. Do you teach others it's okay like that, that brother and sister, they example. He go, she go out there and cheat on him and have a baby by another man. And then they go on social media and video go viral teaching all these black women and these simp black men that it's okay for them to do that. That's against God. God said that's an Damn. abomination. Wow. Go ahead, Cap. I'm glad you mentioned that because mm -hmm. further down in the scripture, Deuteronomy 24, it said that the land be not defiled. Right. Don't right. do that. Otherwise, right. you defile the entire land. So that's mm -hmm. it. That out. Yep. So everybody can see that example and follow it. And the next thing you know, everybody cheating on their husband and bringing their heirs by other men. That's against God. The Lord said, no, stone them. Get rid of them. Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord was not playing. We got mercy right now, but it's going back to that. In the wilderness, the Lord said, any one of your children prophesy, his mother and his father got to stack, grab a sword and thrust him through. It's going hey. back to that. Right now, we got it easy because we can just, damn, I'm wrong. Let me get myself together. It's just words or putting you out the body for a little while or whatever the case may be. Watch online. That's easy compared to, hey, get them, get them. Okay, y'all line up, uh, tie him to that tree where he can't move. Now y'all throw rocks at him until he die. That's what it was at that time. Or burn them alive. Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments Go and ahead. shall teach men so. Go ahead. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. I mean, you're not getting in. Go ahead. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The, the same going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For keeping the commandments and teaching the commandments. That's what Christ taught. Now watch this. Go to the next book. Judea.
It's called Judea Trembles Under Rome. It was written by a man named Rudolph R. Windsor. Y'all know Rudolph R. Windsor. He also wrote Babylon and Timbuktu. Right. All right. Judea Trembles Under Rome. Go inside. Speak about Christ just for a minute. At the bottom of that, at that first page, it says, Jesus, in this section, it is, is my aim. Jesus, a Judean yes, nationalist leader. Yes, sir. In this section... It is my aim to identify the Judean or real Jesus as opposed to the mythical or unnatural one. All right, go to the top of the next page. The real Jesus who fought against the Romans believed in Hebrew nationalism. He specifically told his 12 disciples, go not into the way of the Gentiles mm. and into any of the cities of the Samaritans, now Judeans residing in central Palestine. Enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he said, go rather to that. He's right about that. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. Go ahead. The lost sheep, the above statement of Jesus is pregnant with nationalism. The Webster Dictionary defines nationalism as loyalty and devotion to your nation. Mm. Possessing a sense of national consciousness and exalting the nation above all others. That's right. And placing primary emphasis on... On the promotion of its culture and interest. You hear that? Look at it right here. That's what Christ was doing. Christ oh, was a Christ. nationalist. They would call, today, they would call uh, Christ a black identity extremist. Damn. That's wow. what they would call the son of God if he lived today. Right. Go ahead. This definition of nationalism describes the real Jesus to a T. Go ahead. At another place, Jesus said, salvation is of the Jews, John mm -hmm. 4, 22. Mm -hmm. No doubt Jesus, being a Judean, adopted this saying from Zechariah 9, 23 and 9 and 9. After Jesus told his disciples to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, in the next verse, he instructed his disciples, go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go ahead. As I, as I have shown... If I, as I have shown, the kingdom of heaven... Why don't you read it right there? It's closer to your face. Well, I can't. I got to see it. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. The kingdom of heaven is the righteous kingdom of God, which is in... Et, is that essence? Essence. Essence, John and Jesus, intended to establish in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. It is obvious that the phrase kingdom of heaven became a slogan of national liberation to rally the Judean people against Roman colonialism. <laughs> This line of logic keeps Jesus within his historical context. Right. Now, watch this. Now, he wasn't rising up against them in arms because Christ could have just snapped his fingers and got rid of them. Hey. But what he was doing was he was teaching our people to love themselves as the nation of Israel and separate themselves from their oppressor and their oppressor's ways. Right. That's now, watch right. this. Go to Matthew 15, 24. It goes right with uh, Matthew 10, verse 5 and 6. There's some good stuff right here. So Christ was the greatest revolutionary known to man, brethren, and he was for his people. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You hear that? Y'all, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ Hurt. came for the Israelites. But watch this. Keep reading, because this is an Edomite woman he's talking to. Go ahead. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, mm -hmm. it is not me to take the children's bread. It, this is nationalism. This is uh, uh, identity, right? He's speaking about his people. He said it ain't good to take the children's bread, meaning the Israelites' bread, read. Hey. And to cast it to dogs. And to cast it to dogs. You hear what the Messiah is saying? I'm here, for the, I'm here for my people and my people only. Go ahead. And she said, truth, Lord. And she said, you know what? Truth, Lord. Go ahead. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. But we're going to be y'all slaves. So can I at least get a crumb that fall from my master's table? Meaning I know you Israelites is my masters. Now, remember the Bible said, I came not to destroy the law or the prophets. Go to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse Let's 11, go. 11 and 12 real quick. Regarding Jesus Christ. Because like the brother said in the book, Jesus Christ was a nationalist. He was hey. for his people. And his people only and their culture and their interests. He wasn't You're interested in partaking in Rome's customs or Rome's interests. Watch this. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 11. Come on. The sun and moon stood still. Are in you in Hebrews? I mean, Habakkuk 3 and 11? Yes, sir. Oh, read it again. 
The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. Go ahead. At the light of thine own arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Read. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. So it's talking about Christ. Said Christ marched through the land in indignation, meaning anger, righteous anger. Go ahead. Thou didst thrust the heathen in anger. Read. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. What did the Bible say he did? Thou wentest forth for the salvation of of thy people. Christ went forth from the salvation of his people Earth. and he thrust through the nations, the That's heathen right. in his anger. Then the next verse said, thou went forth. So as he's thrusting through the heathen, threshing the heathen, it's for his people. Go ahead. Even for salvation with thine anointed. And even for thou salvation with thine anointed. Thine, this is some beautiful stuff right here. For thine anointed. That's what yes, Christian means, sir. anointed ones, the anointed ones, because Christ means the anointed. Right. Read again. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, uh -huh. even for salvation with thine anointed. Read. Thou wantest the head out of the house of the wicked. That's uh, the America, America, Babylon the Great. Read. Right. By discovering the foundation unto the neck. And Christ going to go at the neck Say for his lie. people. And what did it say? Say la. Say la. Right? Go ahead. You ask something? Go ahead. Yeah, give me Matthews 1 and 21. Because a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they read this, but they look past it. You know what I'm saying? You got to see who Christ came for. Who did Christ come to save? Uh, I got this script, and I want another one. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 1 mm. and verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Uh -huh. For he shall save his people. That's plural. Read. From their sins. From their sins. We the only ones that can sing. Give me Matthews 18 and 11 real quick. So we're going to stay in the same book, right? In the book. Let's find out who he come to save. You got that for the me? The book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Who was lost? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. I guarantee you, look, you apologetics in them, all y'all reading that, that new King James Version and all that. This scripture is not in your Bible. Right. right. They removed it for a reason. Now, go to those images real quick. Or what I had next. Yeah, go to those images real quick, the icons. Skip the other pages of that book because we ain't got time. Give me the images real quick, the icons. Yes. So inside this book, the icons, right, uh, the meaning of icons, it talks about or shows the imagery of our ancestors. And as you can see, they're all black. Right. Christ and the apostles Peter, James, and John, uh, John the Revelator, um, uh, King David, Moses, right? You see Christ resurrecting Lazarus. You see uh, Christ riding in on the on the horse. I mean, on the uh, the donkey, the the ass. You see right here uh, uh, at his tomb over there. You see the angel right there with him, and then you see um, Mary and all them at his tomb. They all black, y'all. They all That's black. Right. You understand? Go to the next image. This is why they black. The reason that our people painted this imagery is because our people were nationalists. The Christ and the apostles were for their people, y'all. Hey. That's why they painted this imagery, because they were proud to be black. All praises. Go to the next one. Right. They didn't say it doesn't matter. Right. That's all, foolishness. Right. All this art. They didn't say it didn't matter. And only black people that ain't never been nowhere in their life say stuff like that. Because when you travel, Esau got his imagery everywhere. They love their ancestors. They love their forefathers. We the only people that don't. We don't honor our leaders. Look at this right here. Damn. We don't honor our leaders. But our ancestors did because they were nationalists. This is why they hated the Christians. Hey. Look, our forefathers killing a Leviathan, a baby dragon. Come on. Our people were proud to be black. Proud of their skin, proud, loving their neighbor as themselves. Yes, the sir. apostles. Go ahead. Is that it on the on the images? Look at that. That's the last one right there. All right. Go to that um, Tucker Carlson. Don't go to the actual video. Go to the Instagram post. It's quicker. Bishop posted on his Instagram. I was gonna post the whole video, but for sake of time, we got a lot to get through. We we'll just go to the Instagram post. These type of things, they hate to see us revolutionized. They, don't, they do not want to see us as revolutions. They want to see us as docile Negroes. This is why they're okay with the Cardi B's of the world and the P. Diddy's of the world and the athletes and so on and so forth because they don't pose a threat. They don't pose a threat to the current system. 
Christ posed a threat to the current system because Christ taught nationalists. He taught Israel to love themselves. He taught Israel to love their neighbor as themselves. Work together. Build with each other. Keep the commandments and faith in me, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Change your hearts. Stop following Roman customs. Stop following hey. Greek customs. Christ hey. taught that, and they hated him for it. All right, watch this. Go to that Instagram post. It was right after the YouTube post. Let's it on, go. It was on Bishop's Instagram. It was a, uh, yeah, I posted it. It's number 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull that up real quick. Pull it up. It's like we'll never kind of understand uh, common terms on that. So, I think so of many other examples where you're interviewing someone, they'll say something that's like, I was interviewing a guy one time and he started talking about the black Israelites and we're the real Jews. And I was like, you know, and it wasn't on camera, but I was like, I don't, that was so, it was so far out to me that I was like, we'll never kind of understand uh, common terms on that. But you see this? So he said, so he said, he, he said somebody he was interviewing, he said it was off camera because it would never make, by the way, it would have never made it on camera. But it was all camera, and the guy said, yeah, you know, we the black Israelite. And the Lord put it on his spirit to say that. He said that the brother or whomever he was saying, we are the black Israelite. He said, we'll never come to terms on that. What he means is, nigga, I never put that crap out. Because I don't want your people to wake up and believe it. But we see Tucker Carlson, he done had Cardi B on his show before. He done had wicked black folks that preach wickedness and push wickedness in our community. He done had them on his show. But he would not let the brother come on and say that we the Israelites. It's a reason for that. The hell is this? That's against the wishes of the people that pay him, which is Amalek. Right. Because Amalek owns CNN. They own the media. That's right. They say, hell no. You can't go against our interests. So they despise us for that thing right there. They despise us for being the people that Christ came and died for. You understand? Now go to Imperial, Imperial Rome real quick. What have I had first? No, the catacombs. Number 20. You can y'all can go in order. If I say something out of order, it's on me. Y'all can go in order. Now, zoom in on it. And I want you to read that off. The catacombs. Life and death in early Christianity. So the catacombs, life and death in early Christianity. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Because the early Christians were all killed. Right. Didn't nobody say, hey, I want to be a Christian back then, and it was considered an okay thing. You was in odds with everybody on earth. You understand? The catacombs is where we used to hide. Right. That's why they were created. Go to the image. I'm going to show you. This, we used to have to hide in caves underground Damn. because wow. we were being persecuted. But now everybody a Christian. Now everybody says, oh, I love Jesus. No. They've watered down the gospel. Message. This is the catacomb right here. This is the routes. Go ahead. Inside the catacombs, you see black images. Go down to the bottom real quick where it said 32. It's showing you what it is though now. Go down there. You got it? Read it. Peter and Marcel Marcellinus, Christ enthroned between Peter and Paul, Early 5th century. Now go to the top. It said Christ enthroned between Peter and Paul. And what color were they all? Black. They was all black. Look at their hands. Look at their face. Look at their hair. Look at the beard. They were all black. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Look at their skin color versus their clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Right. They were all black. Right. So this is why we had to hide from Rome. This is why we had to hide even from our own people because Christ was teaching revolutionary, quite revolutionary acts and so were the apostles. Now go to the next image. This is called Imperial Rome. Let's see what was going on to the Israelites in Rome. No, it says Imperial Rome. It's number 24. Right after that last image, it was number 24. Imperial Rome. The gladiators of Rome were Negro. That's what it says. Because you got to understand this history to understand why the Jews were being killed. Why the believers in Christ were being killed. Why were they being martyred? It's because they were revolutionary. Hey. And they stood up against the powers that be with the word of God. 
by not falling into their lusts and desires and things of that nature, their idolatry. You got it? Y'all got it? Yep. So notice that I want you to zoom in on the picture real quick. This is a lion. Zoom in on that if you can. This is a lion and over the, on the back of a man. Now notice what the man looked like. First of all, his nose is missing. Just, it's just, it's just all their nose always gone, Cap. Just so happened the nose always miss. I wonder why the nose of all things. Hmm. So this is a black man right here. How do we know? Go over to the side real quick. Zoom in on the side. I want to read it on the top, yeah, on the side, yeah. But zoom in so everybody on the on the, on the uh, that's watching can see it too. What's going on? Just zoom in, brothers. Damn. Oh, let me stop. You know, somebody might get in their feelings. You guys treat the IT bad. I'm sorry. Terminator Beast. <laughs> Terminator Beast. Come on. Come on. And the amphitheaters like the one above, Romans could see, according to Pliny the Younger, that the love of glory and the desire to win inhabited the bodies of even slaves and criminals. Wait a minute. It said the that the love of glory and desire to win inhabited the bodies of even slaves and criminals. I want you to think about this. You ever see a basketball player or a football player or whatever? They go into what's called a zone where just things are just clicking on the court or on the field. And you're like, man, that dude on fire today. What is it? It's that desire to win and glory. It inhabits the body. There's a spirit in sports. And when you, are, when you focus and worship these sports and give all your life and your heart, or your, your hard work and, and sweat and determination, and you only care and love and think about that, you tap into those demons. Right. And you give yourself to it, and that's why you can play so well. Damn. Wow. Mm. Go to the next post. Next one. So he's telling you it's a spirit in that, that desire to win and glory that come from the ancient Greeks. I told you. It's psychology behind this sports stuff, man. We don't even know it. We've been so accustomed to it and grew up around it and watched it our whole lives and played it and got family members that played it. We don't think nothing different. Now I want you to zoom in to the side real quick. Can y'all zoom in on this? First of all, everybody at the top black. But can y'all zoom in? Y'all didn't download it? All right, here we go. Maybe we work now. All right. Read that in highlight. Yes, sir. Most of them were prisoners of war, mm. slaves or criminals sent through stern training schools the night before they had been fed it at a lavish banquet. Go ahead. Gladiators. No, no, keep reading. Oh, yes, sir. Where fans came to eye favorites and gamblers to estimate odds. You whoa with that? Whoa! They was placing bets. That's the same thing you see today in Damn. Vegas, where they place bets on a parlay. You go to the parlay house. Give me twenty dollars on such and such to win such and such, and that will triple your money. Or give me a hundred dollars on this, and that will quadruple your, or whatever the case may be. They was betting on the slaves, the prisoners of war, and the criminals. Let's see who they were. Skip down to them. Gladiators often fought with mismatched weapons. Negroes are a rare sight in Rome. Were matched with each other. Wait a minute. Negroes are a rare sight in Rome. That's not a rare sight. Hey. We were the gladiators. Paul hey. was a Negro. Jesus was a Negro. Hey. The apostles were Negroes. Hey. You see this BS? You see this foolishness? Now go over to the side. Let's see who was fighting bulls and tigers and lions and bears. Hey, Acts mm -hmm. 13, Peter was called nigger. He was called nigger. Now look at these men. Black. 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 The gladiators were black. It told you that they Negroes. Acts chapter 18, verse 1, to prove that black Negroes were in Rome. Let's go. The book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 1. Yep. And after these things, Paul departed from Athens mm -hmm. and came to Corinth and found certain Jew named Aquila, mm -hmm. born in Pontus, Read. lately come from Italy. Lately come from Italy. With his wife Priscilla, Read. because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Right. So Claudius Caesar banished the Jews from Rome. So they hey. came to Corinth. Corinth is in Greece. They went to southern Greece, to Corinth, and to flee from Rome. So when he said Negroes are a rare sight in Rome, that's a lie. 
They were not a rare sight. Message. We were all through Rome. We were scattered all through those provinces in those different areas, right? Now, skip down in the same chapter. Go to verse 19, because we weren't only in Rome. We were in various different places. Read that. Acts 18, verse 19. Go ahead. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. Mm -hmm. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Uh -huh. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But I will return again unto you. But Paul said, I'll be will. back. I'll come back to Ephesus if God will. Read. And he sailed from Ephesus. And, so, he, and he sailed from Ephesus. So the apostle Paul was in Ephesus. Go back to the map. Let's see what Ephesus is. Because they left Rome. He went into Corinth. Then he left Corinth. and he went into Ephesus. Now, let's go look at the map real quick. Go back to Paul's journeys map. Now, zoom in. Let's see what Corinth is. Do we see Corinth on there? Oh, they don't have it. They got Achaia. Corinth is over there where Achaia is. Corinth is in that country. It's on the coast of it. All right? But right across the Asian Sea, you have Ephesus. So it's a boat ride, a two, three-hour boat ride right across there from uh, um, Corinth right across to Ephesus. So Paul just took a boat ride over to Ephesus. You understand? So now... We had plenty of brothers and sisters that were there in Ephesus, right? I want you to show me that picture that I posted. There's a picture that I posted of myself. It's number 20. No, before you go there, go to 26. Before you go there, go to number 26. There's a book called Israel Redividus. Israel Redividus. I want you to go down to the blue. Read that for me. The Scythians? Scythians. Sith the Scythians. Scythians. How you say the next one? Gitai. Gitai, thrashings, and gossip, having thus been traced to one common origin, uh -huh. or as being rather different names for the same people. Read. There can be no reasonable doubt, but these represented the descendants of the ten tribes who had escaped from the Assyrian captivity. So the brothers and sisters in Ephesus were not only Jews from the southern kingdom, they were also the ten tribes. Who had escaped right. from the Assyrian captivity. Keep reading. It has also been seen that some of these migrated into Asia Minor mm. and thus joined the Greco Israelites in their colonies there. You hear that? So, what about when somebody say the people that are in Ephesus were not Israelites? They don't know no history. Go back that. to the map. The Scythians, the Thracians, the Goths and the Gita, those were the ten tribes that went to Asia Minor and joined themselves to the Greco-Israelites, meaning the Israelites that were in Greek, in Greece. Right. Go back to the map. Look at Ephesus right there. Let's zoom in on it. For all the people that got something to say about the Israelites, oh, y'all wrong. No, you don't know history. Those Israelites that migrated from Assyria up into these places right there, those were the ten tribes. What you got? Hey, Cap, apologetic, but not ever pull Galatians 3 and 28 again. Never. Because <laughs> you just destroyed that with this map and that book right there. That destroyed all of them with Israelites there. Hey. That's why we got to go read. Hey, don't it Colossians, don't it call them that? You got to go ahead and read it, Cap. Colossians 3 and 11. I thought I said that in there. Bring it out. The book of Colossians. Hey, hey can we pull the book back up? Mm -hmm. Pull that page back up real quick. Mm -hmm. The name of that book is called Israel Redividus. Scythians, yes. So read this, read this again real quick. Yes, Just sir. that top part. The Scythians, Gita, mm. Thracians, and Goths, having thus been traced to one common origin. Listen, it says one common origin. Go ahead. One common origin, or as being rather different names for the same people. That's it. Different names of the same people. Now, Colossians 3 and 11. The book of Colossians, chapter 3 and verse 11. Where, where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision nor uncircumcision Go ahead. barbarian or scythian scythian yep bond nor free but christ is all and in all why, Damn. Does, why does it say that because they're the same people come on paul was only addressing israelites <laughs> damn that book was cold-blooded cat that was heavy <laughs> bro y'all who you think you're messing with history is on our side Hey. All we got to do is go research it. So shout out to our elders, man, the leadership, for, for presenting this information to us 
that we never knew or had. I'm telling you. Now go back to Acts 18. Read verse 24 right quick. You know what? Uh, yeah, no, go to uh, Acts. Just go to, straight to Acts 19. No, go to Acts 18, 24. Just read 24 to 26 pretty quick. The book of Acts chapter 18 and verse 24. And a, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. So Apollos was a mighty man come from Alexandria, right? But it says that he, he went to Ephesus and taught the scriptures. The brother was mighty in the scriptures. Hey. Only thing he didn't know was Christ. Watch this. Knowing only the baptism of John. So he had only known the baptism of John. Go ahead. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. But when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Read. And when he was disposed to pass to Achaia, the, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much which had been, excuse me, helped him much which had believed through grace. Read. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So he went in and he taught them Jesus is the Christ. Hey. Through the Old Testament, because that's all that was written at this time. Now go to chapter 19, verse 1 real quick. Acts 19, 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, uh -huh. Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus. So Paul came back to Ephesus. Finding certain disciples. Go ahead. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed on Christ? Go ahead. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Go ahead. And they and he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? So what were you baptized then if you didn't receive the Holy Ghost? Read. And they said unto John's baptism. They said to John's baptism. So this was the same. Remember, it said that's all Apollos knew at first. So these men only knew that as well. Go ahead. Then said Paul. John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, Read. saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Can somebody tell a Christian that that's still dipping in water? Go ahead. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8. And when he, and when he, and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months. So he went into the synagogue of the Jews in Ephesus because there was a Jews, Jewish synagogue in Ephesus. Ephesus. Hey. It said he spake boldly for the space of three months. Read. Disputing and uh -huh. persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Read. But when divers were hardened. So divers were hardened against Paul. Read. And believed not, mm -hmm. but spake evil of that way before the multitude. He departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. So he saw that, look, there's contention here. He left the synagogue and went to a school of Tyrannus. Tyrannus allowed him to teach the disciples there. Hey. But he left those brothers and sisters that was, that was rejecting the word in the synagogue in Ephesus. So there were Jews in Ephesus. Remember it said that the Scythians, the northern kingdom, joined themselves to them in Ephesus. Hey. So y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Now, give me that image I posted. Let's go. Yep, this one right here. Now, this is the ancient city of Ephesus. And the reason I took this picture pointing there is because that used to be where the downtown was. That's where they sold slaves. They sold black slaves right here, downtown Ephesus. You understand? Go to the next image. Speaking of slaves in Ephesus, anybody know what this is? Huh? What did you say that was? Like a it's a toilet. That's exactly what it is. Hey. The, the, the Romans were so disgusting. This was the meeting place. They would meet there early in the morning and they would sit on those things. And those were, like he said, those were toilets. They would sit there and take a dump. The hell but is before this? they can come, it would be so cold out, they would make the black slaves that were in Ephesus, they would make those black slaves go and sit on it to warm it up for them. So that's what our ancestors would have to do. You, and you were forbidden to use the bathroom. Damn. Wow. So then we asked the tour guy, but they was black though, right? Well, you know, da, 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 da. some of them was black. Some of them, they was all black. We hey. just read the history. They was black. You hey. understand that? Go from there. What's the next image I had? Go to the next image. Look, it's the same thing. Go ahead. Look at that. Go back. Go back. So this sister right here, I forgot her name. 
She donated, she, was, she had became a rich woman in Ephesus, and she donated a temple, right? Somehow her head missing, and her, and her face is missing. So we don't know if she was black or white. We just have to assume she was a Caucasian because they said, go to the next one. This is an image of Hercules. Hercules got an afro. Bishop said, hey, why Hercules got an afro? The dude said, oh, well, maybe it's just, he said, maybe it's lion's fur they put on his head. That, that ain't no damn lion's fur. And once again, what happened to his nose? Hey, that's like that book that said, a Negro, a rare sight. Mm -hmm. They throw that garbage out there to, to deceive our people. But he said, he said, lion's what? Mm -hmm. He said that, that was lion's hair. That was a lion's come on, man. Come on, man. Go ahead, officer. Um, to, to a cat, go back, go back. To a cat brought out about that lion. Remember the nose was missing on the brother, right? Why the lion nose wasn't missing? Right. They ain't knocked the lion nose. Then we asked him, we said, well, you know, during the earthquake, a lot of the pieces fell off. I said, well, didn't no arm fall off? Didn't no eyeball fall out? Ain't no, only the nose or the head? That's all. It, this dude had a bell pepper nose. They cut it off because he was black. So they, they paint Hercules as a demigod. What it was, he was a great gladiator and he was black. Right. And they don't want black folks to know that we had that much power and strength. You understand? Um, go to Ephesians 1 and 1 right quick. Ephesians chapter the 1. The book of Ephesians four. chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus. To the saints, saints, saints which are at Ephesus. You know what I want? The saints which were at Ephesus. Hmm. Let's see who they were. Because y'all keep, y'all keep, you know, I'm telling y'all keep trying to come against us and you have no evidence. You, you're only going off of off, uh, Christian commentary. They're not accurate. Read that for me. The book of Psalms, chapter 148 and verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. Read. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Read. Even of the children of Israel. Read. A people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. It said a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Go Read. to Ephesians. Chapter 3, verse 21. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 21. Go ahead. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus Read. throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you mean world without end? What the hell is Paul talking about? What you saying, Paul? What he, what, let's see what he quoting. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. Come let's on. Go. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord Read. with an everlasting salvation. Come on. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. What he called Israel? World without end. What he called the Ephesians? Go back to Ephesians. Go back to Ephesians. What he call them? Let's oh, go. God, he ain't there. Come on. If, unto, him be, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Throughout all ages, world without end. Without end, meaning That's at right. that time there were Israelites world without end, and in 2024, because he said throughout all ages there are still Israelites in the land of Ephesus in that city, world without end. Ahead, can, we, can, we, can we prove it further? Um, I'm gonna quote it. Psalms 147 said, "He showed off his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for their judgments." They have not known them. Now, give me Ephesians 6 and 2. He only showed the judgments and the laws unto Israel. So Hurt. look what he was teaching the Ephesians. Read. The book of Ephesians 6 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Honor thy father and mother, uh -huh. which is the first commandment with promise. Where do we read that? Damn. <laughs> We read that in the Ten Commandments that was given to the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. Proving these are Israelites Damn. because the laws was only given to us. Remember, it says in Psalms, the law was appointed to Israel. Right. You dumb Christian. Come on. Hey, go back to Ephesians 1 and 5. Bring it out. show y'all in the scriptures. If hey, you, man, listen. Go ahead. Ephesians 1 and verse 5. Read. Having predestinated unto the... Un, Excuse me. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ 
to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Having predestinated us. Give me that real quick in Romans 8. Let's go. Verse 29. Or is it 28? 29. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. Read. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Right. Go ahead. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Mm. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Right. Go to Romans 11 and 1. At 1 and 2. Let's go. The book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Read. God forbid. Go ahead. For I also am an Israelite mm -hmm. of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Read. God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. To foreknew mean predestinated. He predestinated us. He foreknew us. Just like he foreknew the Ephesians. Who are the Ephesians? They were called to be saints. They were the world without end. They were learning, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Love your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment without promise. Why was Paul teaching them that? Because they were Israelites. That's right. Because when you go to Ephesus, you actually go there for yourself, then you actually can see these were Israelites. I had some more pictures. Yeah, you know Christians ain't leaving out of their church. No, you're right. It ain't going no damn well. Hey, that book said Christ was a nationalist and Paul was a chosen vessel unto him. Mm -hmm. You understand? So Paul wasn't on his own mission doing some other stuff. <laughs> he was about his nation. <laughs> hey, add on to that. Give me the next video, number 33. Give me that video real quick. Let's go. And we're going to have a caller call in a few minutes. Go to number three real quick. I mean, 33. Let me show you something. Play this. The mountain and covered the whole section or what do you see can we walk to where paul was in prison can we go there no sir why because we can make it <laughs> we passed them almost driving there so we can just... you can but you cannot go up to the you know that place why? why because i am not with you if i am with you maybe so come with us let's see yeah we'll see oh. pause he didn't want to take us up there pause it pause it brothers come Damn. on I don't wow. want to miss the video. He didn't want to take us up there to where, because you can see Paul's castle where he was in prison. You can see it from where we were standing. It was pretty far away, but you could see it. So he said, we want to go. Bishop said, I want to go up there. He said, why? Bishop said, why we can't go? He went to hear what his lie was going to be. Oh, I can't go if y'all can't. Y'all don't go if I don't go with y'all. Y'all can't go if I don't go with you. Go back to the video. Watch what something he say, though. Play it. With you. If I am with you, maybe. So come with us. Let's see. Yeah. We'll see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> then we're gonna send up the prayer. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's <what he's> <laughs> hey, what did he say about the cotton field? He said slaves was picking cotton and tobacco over there. You, you see, it's just like America. Mm -hmm. just like see, pause. It's just like America. They was picking cotton in Ephesus. You gotta go for. I'm, you gotta go to these places and see it for yourself. To realize the Bible is a true book. Anybody that say the Bible ain't real, hey. anybody that say, you know, we not those people, man, you don't know what the hell you talking about. Hey. You just don't. Nation is men leading by example. Oh!